Let's give him all the praise. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the praise. Let's just thank God for our position. Let's just thank God for the victory. Let's just thank God for our lives. Let's give him all the praise. He is Yahweh. He is Yahweh. He is great. He is big. He is great. He is beautiful. He is big. We thank you, oh God. We give you all the praise because you have the power, Father God. You have the power for everything, oh God. We depend on you, Jesus. We give our lives unto you, oh God. Because you know that you are our shield and our battle. We thank you, Father Lord Jesus, because we know that you are our God. You will never leave us to the of God. We thank you, oh God. Yahweh is your name, oh God. We thank you, Father Lord Jesus. Oh
morning. We welcome you into our midst. We thank you ahead for all the great and mighty things you will do in this service today. Thank you, Father. Let our praises come up to you like a sweet smell in summer. So that you release your blessings. You open the windows of heaven. Pour in us out a blessing that no room will be enough to contain it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are happy to be in God's presence this morning, I want you to shout a bit. Hallelujah. Side is the winning side. Come and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Finally, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have a glorious thing for the present. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time this morning? Anyone worshiping with us for the first time? Hallelujah. No one has yet. Hallelujah. Let's welcome one another into the house of God. church teaching the love of God to people. By the way we live. By the way we represent God. Hallelujah. Amen. Our service times, I'm sure we're all away, but I'm going to go through it again. On Sundays, we have a special celebration services. Hallelujah. We start from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Prayers and intercession starts at 9.30 until 10 a.m. before the actual service starts. And then on the first Sunday of every month, we have a divine empowerment and communion yeah. service. Yeah. Last week's Sunday was one, and we were greatly empowered. Amen. Home cell meetings on Tuesdays at Alexandra. We have meetings at Mama Monica's house from 6 to 7 p.m. And then here on Wednesday in the church auditorium, we meet from 6.30 p.m. until 8 p.m. for Bible study. Amen. Amen. And then alternate prayers on alternate Fridays we have prayer meetings. And the next meeting is supposed to be on the 28th of September. Please change the date. Um, the last one was this last Friday, which then hold we were told to pray at home. So the next one will be on the 20th after two weeks of September. Amen from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then on Saturdays, we meet here for intercessory prayers from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. I want to encourage us to come, either for the alternate prayer meetings 
of our Saturday meetings because there's an adage in my language that says that what is good requires prayer not to now talk of the other side hallelujah amen. amen so let us come together to pray don't forsake the gathering of brethren because there's power there's corporate anointing hallelujah amen kingdom business Please continue to pay your tithes and pledges. The account details of the church are as follows. Life Center Bible Church, Standard Bank, Midrand Branch, and the account number is 202-517-586. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember that paying your tithes and pledges is not about, is not for God, it's for you, so that you will be blessed. It's always blessing in giving. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we rise up to our feet? And with the joy of the Lord in our hearts, let's put our hands together and welcome the ministry of the second man of the house, Reverend Dr. Sumishu. Hallelujah. And he said unto them, this is a commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ and in your Bible. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. In our attempts to live maximally, or maximize living in fulfillment of purpose, in fulfillment of destiny, there is no way that we can escape the original intention of God for the kingdom. Most of what we see these days is our personal development. As much as good as it is, the word of God encourages us to seek ye first the kingdom of God. Most of what we are seeking after is seek ye first, we are seeking ye first our kingdom. Our kingdom. I am calling you this morning, just like last week I started, reviving us, taking us to back to the intention of God. What is your body? What, what are you created for? Why are you living? What is the purpose of God for your life? Why, apart from the Father, why are you born? Why are you born again? Have you thought about it? The word says, go ye. Go ye into all the world 
Go ye into all the world and preach. When you go into all the world, you're going into all the world is in your business. You're going into all the world is in your uh, in your family. You're going into all the world is in your business, in your endeavors. You're going into all the world is in your academics. You're going into all the world is in every area where you every sphere, every area where you have influence. Are you getting me? Yes. The Bible says preach there. When last, as a person, do you preach? As a matter of fact, I've developed it in the last two weeks. I've made up my mind. I won't tell you, invite people to church again. Invite people to church. No. Rather, I will encourage you, preach to people. Yeah. Get people born again. Yeah. Because then, that brings revival into your life. Yes. It brings fruitfulness into your life. It brings fruitfulness. It brings freshness. In such a way that you cannot but pray for the fruits that you have brought. Are you getting me? Yes. Go ye into all the world. This thing should not be turned into just motivational speaking. Christianity, church going, church attendance should not just be about motivational speaking or building ourselves. If we are not careful, there is a move of God that we will lose. There is something about the kingdom of God getting people born again. Otherwise, we just will focus on me, 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 I, 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 I. I told you about the story of the successful man in Luke chapter 12 last <coughs> week. Can you remember? Yes. After being thinking that he is successful and is doing everything that God said he should, I mean, that he said he should do. I will pay my bonds. I will open that account. I will do this. I will do that. I will put more out there. God said you are a failure. Mm. God called him and said you are a failure. Mm. You have done all that you can do. What about what I sent you to do? Ah. What about what he sent us to do? Mm. Are you getting me? It's not only about you. It's about others. Your life, any life, any organization, any any structure that exists for itself at a point will cease to exist. If your life is only about you, at a point you'll be so nourished, you'll be so fat, you you will just see that you stop being. Every man has a limit, but God does not have a limit. Preaching the gospel is a mandate for everybody. Let us go back to the basics. Let us go back to the basics. Let's talk to people about the kingdom. Let's talk to people about being born again. Being saved. Being saved. Three intentions I have this morning is to remind you of preaching. The second one is to go into the importance of prayers. And the third one is to do the prayers. Are you with me? Especially with the going on around which is intended, the xenophobia, whatever, whatever, which is intended to create fear inside both foreigners and indigenous. Because this is to, is a distraction, big distraction for all of us. Are you with me? But honestly speaking, our life that we live is not meant to be circumstantial. It's meant to be lived from inside out, carrying out the purpose of God for our lives. But if we are not careful, circumstances of life will so much distract us that we will forget that our origin is God. The origin of life or the origin of anything is the only source that can sustain it. The origin of man is God. The sustainers of man in living is God. When fish moves out of water, he will cease to live. When man moves out of God and starts depending on his own psychology or his own psych alone, which is being created as part of man, that man ceases to exist maximally. Are you getting me this morning? Praise the Lord. First thing, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. One of the reasons why people don't preach the gospel is because they are not living the gospel. Mm -hmm. One of the
the reasons, another reason why people don't preach the gospel is because they have been distracted or dissuaded or they are not fully persuaded again. There is something about being fully persuaded about God that makes you flow freely in Him. Are you with me? Yes, I know they will, they will have questions. You have questions about life, but don't forget that the whole life is programmed by the devil yeah. to destroy to dissuade you away from God. Mm. And that is why you must go back to the origin. Mm. You must go back to the origin. We always go back to the origin. If you can, you can maintain this. The emphasis on my second point will be on your vertical relationship with God. Mm. Because when we see that things are changing, when we see that things are dwindling, it's because your vertical relationship with God is dwindling mm. or is changing to a lesser degree. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see this morning. First Corinthians. Okay. I intend starting from Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Don't ever forget. The go ye into all the world is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Preaching of the gospel is for everybody. Mm -hmm. We need to populate the kingdom of God. Yes. We need to bring more fruits into <coughs> the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We need to have things that we rejoice about when we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. we, you were born naked. Mm -hmm. You brought nothing into the world. All the things that we're running after, we will leave them in the world. Yes. Our goal in life should not be more messages, more caricature things, more books. The Bible said to the end of books, there is no end. Of writing books, there is no end. Are you with me? Our ultimate goal, as much as I love academics, as much as I love money, business, as much as I love good family, relationship, and everything, our ultimate goal is not in them. They are just tips of the iceberg, of the root. Our main root is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and populate it and seek and do the plan and purpose of God for life. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see Isaiah chapter 28 from verse... 11. Maybe we will start from verse 9. From verse 11. Isaiah 28. Are you there with me? Yes. <coughs> okay. We will start from verse 9, like I said. Who? Are we there? Yes. Let's read together. Who whom shall he teach knowledge? And who shall he make to understand doctrine? Then that I will be from the milk and drawn from the breast. For, for precept, precept of be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to these people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherein you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet, they will not hear. Let's stop at verse 12. This morning, I want to talk to you about the refreshing from the presence of God. It's all about your vertical relationship with God. What do I intend talking about is about prayer. What do I intend talking about? What do I intend mentioning? I intend talking to you about how you can water that which you have already sown, that which you have already started, that it may grow like never before, and it may produce like never before. I am talking about something that will make your life so outstanding that others will envy you. Are you getting me? Prayers has turned into something else. Things that we do only for our own advantage. Whereas his original intention is for fellowship with God. It's for fellowship with God. Whoever you spend time with, they rub off on you. When we spend time with God, he rubs off on us. One, one, one of the reasons of the confusion, stress, 
worry, anxiety that people carry around or hopes inside their heart that people carry around is because they spend more time with the world more than with God. More than with God. Hallelujah. Recently, you will see cultural issues. You will see behavioral attacks coming on people, other people going to attack others, people carrying things on their inside to unleash on others. Why? Because of whom they have been fellowshipping with. Traditionally, I mean, the whole world, the whole atmosphere is so much filled with hatred. Look at it in the last one week. You will see that fear is palpable almost everywhere in the country. To the extent that people will be calling from all over, uh, all over the world asking for your, our farewell. You understand? As foreigners, as indigenous. What people don't know is that as foreigners are afraid, even the indigenous are also afraid. Hallelujah. I got a text within the week from one of our sisters says, we, some of us got it, almost all of us got it, that says, avoid uh, a particular place because people are rushing to China Mall over here. How many people got the text? You understand? Okay. Now, the thing is this. Where do you think such mindset originated from? Is it, are they attacking China? Attacking China Mall? Are they attacking Nigerians? My family just escaped with the skin of their teeth from spa. Are you with me? They were locked inside and made to as come out from the other room. Where do you think that is coming from? Mindset that is corrupted. And it shows the level of our prayer in changing things. In changing situations. It shows we are not taking authority as Christians enough. Midrand is too small for God to change. Yes. Midrand is too small for God to change. Do you want to tell me that if we have 400 churches in Midrand, if we have 400 churches in Midrand, the culture, the social, economic climate of Midrand will not change? Of our thing will not change? No matter how it is, call it religion, things will change. But all what we are interested after is how I can get there. How I can be, how I can have, how I can have. Not much about the kingdom. It's not like man is living up to self and not living up to God again. We wake up in the morning and all what we are interested after is in running to work, running to work, running to work. What about your source? What about your origin? Apart from being affected by what the people will do out there, you yourself will be contributing to the negative that is going on in the world. The time has come. The time has come when we have to go back to our bases. When we have to go back to our source. When we have to go back to who has called us, what he has said, what we should do, and how we should live daily. You that have never yielded to fear. You have never yielded to fear. You've taken giant steps for God. It's now that you are taking you are being led by fear. You are being led by circumstances. <coughs> you that used to be on fire on the world, on fire, executing the world, executing judgment, carrying out the dominion mandate of God or not, you are now being allowed to be oppressed. You are now being allowed. I mean, you are now allowing the pressure of the world to dictate what you do and not what you do, and what you don't do. Are you getting me? It shows how low, how low things have gone. But by the grace of God, things will change this morning. Amen. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Things will change this morning. Amen. Because for you to be in the secret place of God, it brings prosperity. Yes. That is what we are running after. It comes naturally in Psalm 1. Verse 1. Let, let's quickly see that. Let's quickly see that. In Psalm 1, from verse 1 to 3. And then we'll go back to this. Amen. Psalm 1. Let's read. We are reading up to verse 3, please. 
Let's read together. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Go back to verse 1, please. Go back to verse 1. Look at it. He said, Blessed, empowered to prosper, is the man that walketh not in the counsel, in the counsel, in the thoughts of the ungodly. Of the ungodly. The ungodly now dictates what happens in the world to us. Look at television. Look at everything. The drama is like promoting homosexuality. As if homosexuality is a standard thing now. It shows how the whole world has gone. And how decadence has gone into our thoughts about Christianity. Everything is not just about a physic, a physic, prosperity. Of what use is prosperity when there is no peace? Of what use is good money when there is no peace? Of what use is you getting to the topmost of your career and yet you have no long left to enjoy it? Laboring and laying down for the wicked. Which is the portion of the wicked, but not our own portion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Walketh not in the counsel of the God, nor standeth in the way of sinners. The way st standing in the way sinners do things, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his interest, is what he does in every time. His delight. What, what, another word for the word delight is his pleasure is in what God says. Amen. And in it does he meditate day and night. Does he meditate day and night? Brother, sister, check up your life. What do you think? What things <coughs> dominate your life most? Mm. In the day mm. and in the life. Business, <laughs> prosperity, money, academic success. Uh, what is me, 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 professional success. And we are designed in such a way, thank you, we are designed in such a way that we attract our dominant thoughts. Yeah. Our dominant thoughts every day determine what comes into our life. You understand? When it is God, the word says the blessing of God make it rich and add it no sorrow. Everything comes together. But when it is you, you see everything. You see everything, but things, some things are lacking. Mm. And you start noticing dryness. Mm. A tree does not struggle to prosper. Mm. Why should a man be struggling to prosper? Ah. Struggling for prosperity, struggling to maintain, is a sign of spiritual dryness. Mm. Are you getting me this morning? Our vertical relationship every day matters. Family, husband, and wife. We must hold hands with our children before going out. Pray together. Let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the... Let's go back to the... The basis of preaching the word of God. The basis of announcing who we are. The basis of telling everybody without even speaking about the kingdom. Pretty handing out tracts that we help people, sending SMS these days that talks about salvation. To talk things that will make people know that you belong to the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Am I taking too long? No. Is this, what is mercy? No, oh, I'm not from my phone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Am I on Isaiah 28? 11, please. For with stammering lips and another thumb will he speak to his people. One of the key things that I intend emphasizing this morning is our prayer in the spirit. 
our prayer in the spirit. Every day should not go without you praying for one hour. Minimum. Where do I get that from? Can you not tarry with me for an hour? But I was discussing with somebody with him. You may not do the one hour at its stretch. Do five minutes. Do ten minutes. Do thirteen minutes. You see, do, do five minutes in twelve places. Or do ten minutes in six. Or do twenty in three places. I want to recommend for each and every one of us this week. One of the things that we should do will be action steps. When you're at work, go into the toilet and pray for five minutes. Pray, 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 pray in such a way that there is a refreshing upon your soul. You get in directions. You are so much, in, that vertical relationship is so much solid that horizontal does not matter. Are you getting me? Wisdom will come from it. Wisdom will come. Directions will come. I want to ask us, go back to the basics. Prayer every day. Before you go out and face the devil, start with God. Your quiet time every day reading the word, praying, should not be compromised. You should load yourself with something positive at least 15 to 20 minutes a day. Even motivational speaker says, read at least 21 basic pages of something positive every day. Amen? Amen. And they say, read something of 21 pages. 18 to 21 pages of something positive every day. But look at it. There is nothing more positive than the Bible. Yes. Concentrated as it is, it will change life. It will change life. Don't let us go. And don't let us descend to the level with which we, our believers and unbelievers, there is no difference. God don't make a difference between believer and unbeliever. There are certain offshoots in our characters. There are certain things in our behaviors that is a clear indication of our spiritual level. Not even certain. Almost everything. Either in marriage, either in academic success, either in financial success, or in relationship with others. You that you don't get angry easily. You now become the touchy one. That people cannot say something around. Something is wrong. Mm. And it's here. Yeah. It's from here. Something you don't do 10, 20 years ago. You start doing them unconsciously. And there is no breaking over here. They call that hardness of heart. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the basis. Let's go back to the basis. That's a switch. Um, can you do that? It's to do that. Okay. Now, there's a switch. Switch it off so that it does. I mean, um, sorry. Um, so that you can do that. You know it. Just put it on the yellow range or something. Is it yellow? The orange. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips and other tongue will he speak to his people. To whom he said, This is the rest. I want you to notice some words, key words here. The rest. The rest. The rest. There is nothing that brings rest like our relationship with God, our vertical relationship with God. Praying in tongues will give you rest. Praying it. You see, it's possible for you to be sleeping and not resting. Mm. Because you can be sleeping and all the worry, the anxiety, and all those things is still there. What brings peace? Much business. Much business brings about dreams. There are three sources of dreams much business from God and from the devil. You understand me? But praying in tongues will overcome that. Mm. Praying in tongues will overcome. Make it a habit. I could remember somebody would tell us he prays 10 hours a day. I, I said I will copy it. I copied it. The first time I copied it, I just lie down quietly and I heard inside of me go to a particular, go to Ibadan. Then 
It was when I copied that man, I prayed for 10 hours. I prayed that 10 hours prayer. I had a lady to go and check my admission at the then University of Ibadan. I mean, then, when I was about, I'm talking about 20 something, I'm in 1986 now. That's 33 years ago. 33 years ago. I heard I should go, and, and I should go this side of me. I just kneel. You understand? It's like I hear my voice. I hear something inside of me that go and check in the University of Ibadan. I remember I went, I went there, my father gave me money, and <coughs> that was when I discovered that my admission has not been processed. Others have processed, I was qualified for it, but my form has fallen between the wall and the desk. No. You will say it's demon or something because if admission has gone and they have resumed, I just assumed that they didn't see me. The admission would have been the first till next year. Yeah. Are you getting me? I just said that. And I got it. I wonder, the woman pulled her desk like this and my paper fell. She just shook her head. She herself, she's a prayer woman. I, I knew her. She shook her head and things worked. Most of what we're struggling for, we come up naturally the way we want it to be. Pray, pray, there is still power as of old. Amen. There is still power as of old. And it only comes in our place of fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving directions. Telling us of what to do. You see, rest is not just that physical. People might see you resting physically, but you are not rested on the inside. There's this other one of refreshing. Verse 12. That you may cause the weary. The weary. Who is the weary? Tired. Yes, people. In Mark, uh, is it Matthew eleven twenty eight. He said, call unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily burdened, laden. He said, I will give you rest. The way we Christians live these days is as if he says he will break us down more when we come. And what is causing this? That vertical relationship compromise. That vertical relationship compromise. Brethren, we cannot afford to be shifting ground when it comes to the gospel. Because constant shifting of ground is what we call later on, after some time, chronic backsliding. Mm. If we remain where we are today, well, that's not moving forward, it's backsliding. Are you with me? We cannot just afford not to move forward. The only thing that we can do as a Christian is constantly moving forward. And moving forward in what? Preaching the gospel. Emphasizing that that which we have attained, we bring it back to the fore again. It's like going over and over, over and over, repeating the same thing, but in a refreshing way, in a fresh manner. Are we together this yes, morning? Sir. Are we together this morning? Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, but the word of the Lord no, to whom he said, this is the rest, where is you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yeah, they will not hear. If there's anything any man, especially speakers, need, is refreshing. It's refreshing. And the only place, even you in your relationship, what you need more, one of the things that you need is a refreshing. The only place you get refreshing in an abundant way like never before is when you go back to the source. Mm. The source it refuse, I mean, infuses strength mm. into you. Why? Because I want you to look at this. We are ambassadors of God on earth. Mm. We are the carriers of his glory. Mm. We are the one mandated to execute his plan on earth. And the unfortunate thing about it is that we are leaky vessels. Mm. Hello? Hi, hi. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Leaky vessels. Christians are like a petrol tanker. Or, are you with me? What do you call it? You know, a petrol tanker, a trailer. You know those long trailers? 
Those trucks that bring the uh, petrol to the petrol garage, mm -hmm. to the eh? Eh? Mm -hmm. petrol tankers, mm -hmm. petrol trucks, the long trucks. Mm -hmm. Christians, we are like that. That brings petrol to or diesel to the garage to be distributed, mm -hmm. to be distributed, to be sold to other people. But that petrol garage also, by petrol tanker, also need petrol in itself yeah. to move. Mm -hmm. And the more he carries those things, the more petrol he needs, the more the one inside is depleted. Yeah. So we need every day, every day, the renewal, the refreshing, the renewal, the refreshing. And the only thing that could keep it in that state is that vertical relationship. A lot of things we have substituted for it. Mm. A lot. Yeah. Give me examples. A lot. That we have substituted for this. Confession is good. It's a form of prayer. Yes, it's, it's good. It adds something to us. Confession is good. It's Works. a form of prayer. Works. Thinking that we can do it ourselves. Mm. For example, as believers, you call Jesus Lord because he is Lord of all. Lord means the one that is in charge of everything. It's like we give the thing to him and then we still hold back in some areas. And the more we do that, the more we actually hold back in many areas. In many areas. This is the refreshing that he spoke about. This is the rest that God spoke about. This is real Christianity. Fulfillment of purpose in God. Going back to the basics. For with straight tongues, stammering lips, and other tongues, will he speak to his people? To whom he have said, This is the rest where which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they will not hear. An average man wants to be in a noisy place. Because when you are in a noisy place, it distracts you from home. The moment a man gets quiet, he starts hearing from inside. He starts hearing from inside. And the Bible says, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Living a maximized life, living a purpose-driven life, has to do to, with the original intentions of God. Preaching the gospel, you cannot compromise. Why do you have to? Because God said, because God said, why do we have to keep our relationship with God, prayer, strong, vertical? Because it's the source of our life and the sustainers of it. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14. I don't want to talk about knowledge this morning, but of course, that is part of what is here. First Corinthians chapter 14. And then we go to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 14. Brethren, <coughs> even look at relationships between husband and wife. You will notice that the more the friendship is, the stronger the love will be. The more the communion the more freshness comes into that relationship. The same thing, our relationship with God is like that. It's like that. The more it is strong, you understand? The stronger it is, the better our lives become. Mm. And the Bible says, who will he teach knowledge? Then that are away from breast, mm. then that are away from me. We should not be talking about, we should not be talking about milky and breast issues. Mm. We should be talking about what not the thing that moved in the intercourse between you and God. Mm. We should be talking about that and see the fruitfulness that it brings. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14. First. Two. This this is a verse that I think almost everybody will be able to quote of head here. 
Am I right? Or yes. why? Because God said so. Guys, I will want, uh, please implore you when you get home, read 1 Corinthians 14, the whole thing a lot. So I spoke about advantages of praying in the Spirit. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men. Stop there. Why do you think the devil or everything is contrary to you praying in tongues? Because you're speaking to God. Why do you think the devil or, don't let me use the word devil because I was discussing with Pastor ID on, was it Saturday? Uh, yesterday, um, he said the devil will say, will, so the devil will, when we get to heaven, the devil will judge a lot of Christians and say they tell a lot of lies mm. against him. Have you heard of the story? Let me stop and just put in a little joke of somebody meeting the devil on the street and the devil was crying. You heard of it? You know, okay. Somebody met the devil, why are you crying? And he said, See those churches, they were telling lies against me. Most of the things that I did not do, they said I did. But there are certain systems and the structures that the devil has set in place that will distract you from the word and praying. And those two are the key to your strength. Those two are the key to your living. Because when you don't have the word, and you don't have that relationship where you are, whereby he spoke that word, you just start putting things together. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget, we are like trailers. We are like tankers that is meant to carry life to people. You yourself, you need that life inside of you. You need that life inside of you. So every day you need to get to the uh, station petrol garage of life. And get filled. Mm. And get filled. Mm. The petrol garage of life is the presence of God. Mm. It's the presence of God. If you want to live as if xenophobia is nothing. Mm. One of our great fathers in Nigeria said one day, they said, have you had trouble before? Have you had challenges before? He said, if challenges come or trouble comes, maybe I don't know. Mm. You understand? You can be so loaded with God, with faith or your trust in God, with the life of God that when challenges come, it just rubs off on you and you don't know. It should not be getting to us. It should not be pressing us down. It should not be dictating our life. It should not be holding our mouth so that we don't spread the gospel. A sign of growth is productivity. Mm. Set it as a goal that you will, you, will, you, you will preach to people and bring one or two souls to the kingdom. Mm. What, what goes wrong with that goal? We used to set that. Mm. I'm bringing 12 souls to the Lord this year. In the last five years, how many? In the last one year. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, let's make up our mind. As a church, we want to lead many families to Christ. Amen. We want to stabilize many families. Amen. We want to see many people grow and accomplish their purpose in life in God. Let's make up our mind. Praying for the church. Praying for ourselves. Praying for the fulfillment of God in our lives. Say, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Why? Because no man understands him. How be it in the spirit? He speaks mysteries. He speaks divine secrets. Praying in tongues should be a habit that we develop in such a way that nothing contested. Mm. The devil will not come to you with two horns and red this thing going around. No. He will use someone, something we call wisdom, mm. practicality, or uh, that's not reasonable. Of course, he will come. How did he tempt Eve in the first time in the garden? Is this reasonable? Is this is this good for the eyes? It's good, but does it make sense? It make sense? Praying in tongues. They said praying in tongues, and you too, you are doing it. They say praying in tongues, and you start saying rubbish. As my children will say, they will say gibberish. Are you with me? 
There is something about praying in tongues that makes you live above ordinary. We've seen among Christians, even evangelicals, and other people, other types of Christians, people that pray in tongues, they have a deeper spiritual growth. Deeper Time has come when we come back to our spiritual roots. Because that is where we get the refreshing from. That is where we get what you will be able to launch out to others from. We, from. Amen? Amen. Romans 7, 8, <laughs> verse 26. I will round up with that. That's a long uh, list of scriptures. But, you see, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of things that we don't know or we don't understand in life. But this we clearly open it. Romans 26. Are we together? Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26, yes. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know to what, know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercessions for us with groaning. Let's come there first. It says, the Spirit also help our infirmities. We have so many infirmities, so many weaknesses that it's only the Spirit of God that can compensate for it. Mm. No man runs the race of life with his weaknesses. Mm. You only run with your strength. Mm. And your strength has limitation. Mm. But the strength of God has no limitation. Hallelujah. We can rely on the strength of the Spirit and walk more like never before. Mm. Do you want to break records? Do you want to achieve a life of the life that God designed for you? Do you want to be outstanding in your generation? Yes, then practice this. Mm. Let's go back to practicing this. Mm. 26, let's read down <coughs> more. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knows what is in the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 28 now. Because the Holy Spirit makes intercession for the spirit according to the will of God. Look at this. You know that word and is a conjunction. Right? That means it's a continuation of this. And go. Go ahead. And we know we do what? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We will still read further, but let me quickly point out this for you. Xenophobia, economic situation, wars, situations, different situations and circumstances. The Bible says we know that all things work together for good for them that love God. Because the Spirit is praying for us. Mm -hmm. The more we exercise ourselves in Him, the more we allow Him to use us, use us the more He flows to us. Mm -hmm. Human beings, we are like, like I said, we are like tankers. We are like vessels that He flows to. If God will do anything in this generation, He has to do it through man. Mm -hmm. And it's through you. Yes. Are we still together? Yes, yes sir. sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are very crucial in the purpose of yes. God. You are very important in the purpose of God. And that is why the next, all these verses you will see. Let's move forward. I say, for whom he did for new, for no, he also did predestinate. Right? To be conformed to the image of his son. So that we might among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we say then 
to this thing. If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32. Let's stop there. You can read the rest when you get home. You understand? But verse 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He that spared not his own son, which is where your coming into this all things comes in first. Number one, you can't know all these all things that you are running for without this son. Number two is that you are incomplete without this son. Number three is that without this son, there is nothing, there is nothing like these all things. Because only people that are living can experience the joy or can live. Amen? Now, but deliver him for us all. How shall he not be with us? With him also freely give us all things. You know, the Bible says, this sense shall follow them. All these things shall do this. We follow these things instead of following the son. That is the origin of it. Am I communicating with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bringing you back to the basis of Christianity. Basis of a purposeful life. Of what use is your life? Evidence have shown that the most purposeful lives are the lives that are spent doing the things of God. A time comes in the life of a man where mundane things will remain mundane or will still be mundane no matter how we call it today. Do you understand me? But spiritual things will have been ended. I've been privileged to be at the death <coughs> bed or have seen great men, some people, men, 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 die. Nobody thinks of his profession mm -hmm. and death. There are two or three set of things that matters most then, and they are usually present when great men are. Number one is God. Everything is around God, the Spirit, God, 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 and the Spirit of God is usually present there mm. when great men are departing. Number two is family. Mm. Family. You see families around them. Mm. Nobody say, bring my accolades, bring my paper, bring my car, bring my houses, bring my work. Even by then, the works that they have done have been converted to spiritual storage, mm. waiting for them in heaven. Mm. Let's live our life with an end in mind. According to Jeremiah 29, 11, let's live our life with a purpose in mind, fulfilling the purpose of God for our life. We cannot afford, we are professionals, I know, I am like you. But we cannot afford to live life only like unbelievers living. What then is the difference? What then is the difference? It's high time we go back and hold in priority preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel. Telling people about Jesus Christ. Is it not good? Is it not good? You started this morning by saying, come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Are we telling people about it? Are you convinced that the Lord is good? Are you? Is there any hope of his coming back for the second time? And Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. We need to remind ourselves. We are not just to live for now. One of the sins or the things that people committed in the wilderness and they perished is because they said, let us sit, let us drink and eat. We, we've had it enough. Let's just have merry. Let's just marry in the wilderness. And many people perished like that. As many as will be living up to what they will eat, what they will drink, will perish in the game of life. But if we make the priority of God your priority, 
I don't want to come, I don't want it to come across to you like he's preaching. It's like I want you to understand and see. May God open your eyes. And I know that the Holy Spirit on your inside will be telling you more about this. The purpose of life, the purpose of life is not just for us to build our ourselves, our career, our 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 anything. Is to increase and further expand the kingdom of God. Is to make use of his power on earth. Apart from preaching, the thing that will remain, make you fresh, strong, be like God, which be like the Son Himself, which is the protocol, prototype, which we see in this card is our vertical, vertical relationship. Everything that we do every day is our horizontal relationship. Talk about it. Give me examples. Our eating, our fellowship, our going to work, our our studies. Our, it's just vertical relationship we relate with human beings. Oh, I mean, horizontal. thank you. Horizontal relationships. It's our horizontal relationships that makes us do For us to be effective, which is what you are looking for, which is the all things that you are looking for, ultimate thing, to be effective, to be, to be outstanding in all days, it's dependent on this. And when you pray in tongues, you're speaking directly to God. No man has seen God at any time, but we hear him. We know him. Are you with me? When you pray in tongues, 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 your tongues, people say dry tongues. It will not even be dry when you are in constant fellowship with him. Because it takes you to new dimension of interpretation. The Bible says he that prayed in an unknown tongue edified himself. He builds himself up. Are you with me? Are you a nurse? Are you a doctor? Are you a builder? Are you a, an accountant? Whatever profession you belong to, praying in tongues will help you there. It will help you there. Do you want to, are you raising your children? Or do you have questions about life? Praying in tongues will help you answer questions of life. Are you into ministry to people? You yourself need ministry. Mm. And the only person that will reveal you is that relationship. There is no other. Yes. If you know any, tell me. Don't forget, you are like a petrol tanker. You are like a petrol truck. You. You are disbursing life. You yourself need that life inside <laughs> yeah. of you. And you need it daily. Do we say because we fuel our car today, we don't fuel it in another another time? Hello? Do we say we don't? Okay, another reason why you can do that is maybe you you have another car. You can leave this car on. But we have only one body. You have only one. So it needs to be fueled every day. If somebody say, what did pastor tell you about, preach about, talk to you about this morning. Our vertical relationship in prayer with God needs to be in place daily. Are you blessed this morning? Yes, yes. Sir. Let's stand up on our feet. Let's give him praise. Okay, let me start again. Let's take time to lift up our hands up. The Bible says, I wish that all men will pray, lifting up their holy hands. Let's lift up those holy hands and pray in the spirit. Talking to him. Father, fill me afresh. Lord, fill me afresh. Lord, fill me afresh. Open your mouth and begin to pray. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can come out now, quickly, and then you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's lift up our hands. Let's pray in the Spirit. This is the rest that He promised. This is the refreshing that He promised. Lift up your hands to Him. Focus on Him. Man brigado kolos ten brigado kolos keni yani bi brigado brigado kolos ten dale di di kado brigado ba man ba brigado brigado kolos mo shen de di di kado Syria la gaba gaba brigado kali ya di da 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 ilan brigado brigado kolos ten da la 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 ilan kafra gaba brigado kolos ten dale di di kada ba brigado kolos mo brigado kolos 
Me briga frega do golistana na na na. Glanta lá na gabadi. A lotus que lhe anda. Lito roco briga frega do golistani. Si 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 si. Lito briga 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 do golistani. Lan briga 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 do golistani. Lan briga 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 da. Ela te chama na na na. In a in Jesus. My name we pray. The Bible says, "He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty." I will say of the Lord, "He is my refuge and my refuge." This morning we are going to declare of the Lord a lot of things. We are going to declare of the Lord a lot of things, especially during this time of whatever attack. Are you with me? Whatever you think you want God to be in your life, open your mouth and say, Father, you are my wisdom. Father, you are my strength. Father, you are my finances. Father, you are my builder. Father, you are my source. Father, you are my strength. Father, you are my family keeper. Father, you are my refresher. Father, you are my direction. Father, you are my light. Father, you are my... I want you to open your mouth and begin to say it now. Father, you are my peace. Father, you are my peace. Father, you are my sacrifice. Father, you are my life. Father, you are my children. Father, you are my everything. Father, you are my everything. You make me fulfill purpose. Father, you help me in my academics. Father, you help me in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, this is personal ministry time. I want everybody to close his eyes. Don't look around. I want you to focus on God. Are you with me? We're going to do some prayer right now in the presence of God and his refreshment. Open your mouth, close your mouth. Don't close your eyes. Don't look around. Just say this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare you are my refuge. You are my strength. You are my family source. You are my source. You are my sustainer. I depend on your spirit. I depend on you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In, open your mind and tell him where you want him to help me. In your children, over your children, over your finances, over your marriage, over your destiny, over your purpose. Over everything, say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Say this with me. I am the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. Satan has no power over me. Fear has no power over me. Fear has no power over me. Dread has no power over me. Doubt has no over power over me. For I overcome evil with good. I am of God and I've overcome Satan because the greater one lives inside of me. I will fear no evil for thou with me, Lord. I will fear no evil. Your word and your spirit they comfort me. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. No weapon fashioned against my family shall prosper. No weapon fashioned against my destiny shall prosper. For my righteousness is of the Lord. But whatever I will do, whatever I do shall come to fruition shall prosper. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. I bring forth fruit in new season. I bring forth fruit professionally. I bring forth fruit spiritually. I have spiritual children. My spiritual life is revived. I bring forth fruit spiritually, intelligently, mentally. I bring forth fruit living a life of impact now. Living a life of impact to other people's lives in the name of Jesus. 
I am delivered from the mediocrity of this world. I am delivered from living mediocre spiritual living, average spiritual living. I am hot for God. I am hot for God. The evils of this world will not come near my family. My family, my family, my children, we are on fire for God. In the name of Jesus, I call unto God. He honors me. He honors me. I live with the honor of God. I live. I and the children with the Lord has given me. We live with the honor of God, with the life of God, with the purpose of God, with the plan of God. I am on the egg, spiritually sharp with God. In the name of Jesus. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's worship him. Something for your body, something for your soul. Put your hands on your head. In this body, in the name of Jesus, I command, I declare, I forbid any man functioning, every tissue, every organ in this body function in the perfection to which God has created you to function. I forbid malfunctioning in this body. I forbid cancer in this body. I forbid diseases, viruses, bacteria, all the diseases in this body. In the name of Jesus, I say, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he quickened my body. He gives life to every cell, every cell of this body. You flow with the life of God, with the health of God. In the name of Jesus, I and the children with the Lord has given me. We are for signs. We are for wonders. We are for living according to the purpose of God. Give him praise. Give him praise. Pray in the spirit. Give him praise. Give him praise. Praise in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we give you praise. We bless your name this morning. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please, if you're paying your title, if you transfer it, can you come up quickly? Is this and I will say quickly all the times in your mind, I'll start out. Father, according to your word, let the blessing that comes with Titan be shown, be seen upon those ones in the name of Jesus. Windows of heaven are open over you, over the works of your hand, over the fruit of your body, in the name of Jesus. By this act of righteousness, even the fourth generation coming after you will call you blessed because of the legacy of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Increase will be upon increase in your life. The devourer has been revealed in your life. There shall be no abortion in your life. No abortion of dreams, no abortion of pregnancy, no abortion in the fruit of your body in the name of Jesus. The word says you are in the light some land. You become a delight some life. Men favor you. Women favor you. Even people that don't like your face, they favor and give to you. You are launched into the supernatural name of God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. We receive your tithe. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's rise to our feet. We are going to give our offering cheerfully because God loves us. We have cheerfully Amen. It's rest you. Amen.
Thank you for multiplication, O oh God. Thank you because this offering will cause men to favor us, men to give unto us this week in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you because needs are met. Masia, bring us sike balabra, dishke bababa. Needs are met this week. We are at the right place at the right time. Masike bababa. Thank you because because doors to be opened unto us, Baba, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Please let us speak concerning our week. What do you want this week to bring forth for you in the name of the Lord Jesus? Oh, Kasike Bradishata Baba. This week I am at the right place at the right time. The Bible says that the steps of the order of the righteous is order of God. My steps are ordered. I want you to declare that you are at the right place at the right time. That this week you will preach the gospel. Ah, you will pay mind to spiritual things this week. I will pay mind to spiritual things this week in the name of the Lord Jesus. I will pray more. I will preach the gospel. I will lay hands on the sick in the name of the Lord Jesus. You can declare what you want. Will you read the Bible more this week? I will pay more attention to spiritual things. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened the more this week because my attention will be on spiritual things. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Father God. Every help I will need will come my way this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for supernatural protection. Thank you for supernatural provision this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father God, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please make sure you are touching someone and let us share the grace in fellowship. Make sure you are touching someone. It's important that we are touching someone. Let us share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please, before you go, make sure you tell five people that this will, will be your best week ever in the name of the Lord Jesus.